In this video, we'll talk about the nephron. The basic structural and functional unit of the kidney is called the nephron. Each kidney contains more than 1 million nephrons. A nephron is a tube-like structure which is made up of the many different cells and composed of the following. Glomerulus, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting ducts. The glomerulus is a capillary net that filters plasma making ultrafiltrate and its process is called filtration. Upon entering the proximal tubule, ultrafiltrate is called tubular fluid. Proximal convoluted tubule is a main site of reabsorption of solutes and water. So, loop of Henle is composed of thin descending loop of Henle and thick ascending loop of Henle. The thin descending loop of Henle is impermeable to solutes but permeable to water, thus it concentrates tubular fluid as water diffuses out. The thick ascending loop of Henle is impermeable to water but has sodium potassium chloride transporters that reabsorb most solutes and dilute the tubular fluid, sets up and maintains interstitial concentration gradient. Distal convoluted tubule. It is the site of electrolyte modifications and also is the site where aldosterone acts especially on a late distal segment. Collecting ducts is the site of free water reabsorption through water channels or aquaporins controlled by ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Collecting ducts are also important for acid-base balance. Now let's talk about the functions of the nephron. There are four basic renal processes, filtration, reabsorption, secretion and excretion. Let me draw here a nephron again to explain all of them. So here is the Bowman's space, uh, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts. Talking about the nephron vasculature, here is the afferent arteriole, glomerular capillaries, afferent arteriole, peritubular capillaries, which are joined to vasorector. Glomerular filtration is the first step in making urine. Blood flow to the kidneys is about 1000 ml per minute, or 20% of the cardiac output. The blood, as you know, is composed of blood cells and plasma. From 1 liter of blood, which enters the kidneys, 40% is blood cells, which is equivalent to 400 ml of blood, and 60% is plasma, which is equal to 600 ml of blood. When plasma reaches the glomerular capillary, it would be filtered to the Bowman space, and then flows downstream through the tubule lumen. From 600 ml of plasma, only 20%, which is equal to 120 ml, will be filtered to the Bowman's space. Another important point here is that blood cells and proteins will not be filtered because they are very large. Well, actually, the size of albumin allows it to be filtered, but under normal conditions, the glomerular membrane is negatively charged, which does not allow albumin to be filtered, because albumin has negative charge on it. We will talk about it in detail in the next video. The second step in making urine is tubular reabsorption. The fluid that filters through the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule is very similar to blood plasma without the proteins and at this point not at all like urine. Tubular reabsorption is the process that moves solutes, water and most important 100% of glucose out of the filtrate back into your bloodstream. 
This process is known as reabsorption because this is the second time they have been absorbed. The first time when they were absorbed into the bloodstream from the digestive tract after a meal. Under normal conditions, 66% of the water and sodium and 100% of the glucose are reabsorbed in a proximal convoluted tubule. The third step in making urine is tubular secretion. Tubular secretion is the transfer of materials from peritubular capillaries to the renal tubular lumen. Usually only a few substances are secreted. Many drugs are eliminated by tubular secretion. Finally, the last step is excretion. Excretion is a process by which fluid and dissolved substances are lost in a urine. A substance that is filtered and not completely reabsorbed is excreted in a urine. The last and very important point you should know is calculating the excretion rate. It is very simple. In a nutshell, excretion rate equals filtration rate minus reabsorption rate plus secretion rate. There are two populations of nephrons, cortical and juxtamedullary. If you look inside the kidney, you will see that it has an outer region, the renal cortex, and inner region, the renal medulla, which is composed of outer zone and inner zone. It is very important to know that approximately 80% of all nephrons are cortical nephrons. The cortical nephrons originate from glomeruli in the upper and middle regions of the cortex and their loop of Halley are short, extending only to the inner stripe of the outer medulla. In a cortex, the proximal and distal tubules, as well as the initial segment of the collecting duct, are surrounded by capillary network and the interstitium is 3000 milliosmoles per kilogram, close to an isotonic environment. 20% of all nephrons are juxtamedullary nephrons. The glomeruli of juxtamedullary nephrons are located deeper in a cortex and have long loops of Halley extending deeper uh, into the inner medulla. The medullary region has capillary loops organized similar to the loop of Halley known as the vasorector. In these capillaries, the flow is very slow. The slow flow through these capillary loops preserves the osmolar gradient of the interstitium. However, this slow flow also keeps the partial pressure of oxygen of the medulla lower than that is in a cortex, and even though the metabolic rate of the medulla is lower than in a cortex, it is more susceptible to ischemic damage. In an interstitium, in the beginning of medulla, the fluid is isotonic, meaning similar to the extracellular environment, about 300 milliosmoles per kilogram. Osmolarity rises as you dip down and can reach a maximum of 1,200 milliosmoles per kilogram. Under normal conditions, of course, it is less than uh, 1,200. You can get a maximum osmolarity in a deeper portion of medulla if a patient is severely dehydrated. When a patient is severely dehydrated, the main job of the kidneys will be retaining in a body as much water as it is possible. Dehydration causes increasing the osmolar gradient in a deeper portion of the medulla up to 1200 milliosmol per kilogram. Under these circumstances, the supraoptic nucleus and the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus start releasing antidiuretic hormone through the posterior pituitary into the blood. Antidiuretic hormone starts acting on a collecting dog cells and these cells put on their surface aquaporins and it allows the passive reabsorption of the water.